we'll go ahead and get started. I uh, appreciate uh, all of you coming this morning. Uh, as you know, we have the uh, <coughs> candidates that are coming in for the experimental statistician biometrician position that serves uh, essentially within the division, especially the three colleges, forestry, uh, ag and life sciences, and veterinary medicine, and the research units at the DRC and Matrix. And so this is our first, and I hope you'll participate as we go through this uh, through this process. I don't see anybody here, but we did have a little room mix up. If anybody is supposed to be upstairs in Dr. Grace's glass, it's in 308. We did a little swap this morning. Uh, so just wanted to point that out in case there was anybody here. Um, I've handed out uh, evaluation forms. There are some at both, uh, in the back on both sides. If you didn't get one on your way out, or I'm happy to hand one out here in a minute. If you need one, just let me know. I uh, appreciate it if you'll turn those in as well. Um, I'd like to introduce our, uh, our speaker today. Uh, we have Hong Shi Shui, who got his uh, bachelor's and master's degree in mathematical statistics and a PhD in mathematical statistics from the uh, Institute of System Science at Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing, and is currently at the University of Rochester in the Department of Biostatistics and Computational Biology and is going to share a little bit of, of what he's been doing in both some of his research as well as sort of his vision and philosophy for this statistical biometrician consultancy type role in service to the, the various units within the division of ag. So um, maybe we welcome Dr. Shrek. Appreciate you being here. Good morning. Thanks, uh, Dr. Scottus. Thank uh, you, and uh, thank you all for you for coming here to listen to my report. It's my pleasure to uh, be invited uh, for interview in the Mississippi State. Um, now I want to uh, introduce some research uh, results in my last uh, several years. Yeah, the title is Statistics uh, Analysis on Ordinary Differential Equation Models with Applications to Biological Dynamics. As we know, the ODE model is a mathematical model, not a statistical model. For statistical models, we know a lot of like uh, regression model, Cox model, something like this. But uh, here, I want to introduce uh, ODE model. Yeah. And I want to introduce some applications in biological dynamics. So, because uh, now I am working at the uh, Medical school, so our collective is uh, coming from biomedical research. Yeah. And for the OD models, um, it is a mathematical model, and uh, uh, in 1995 or 1996, Dr. Da Yi He and uh, his collaborator, Dr. Aaron Petrie, proposed that. To, uh, to use such model to fit the AIDS dynamics. They, before their results, the treatment to deal with the AIDS is just uh, use the one treatment. But they want to use different treatments to combine them together, to use two or three treatments to combine them together. Then they found such treatments works very well. And then they use the ODE models, linear ODE models, to fit the dynamics. Since then, a lot of researchers have worked on this field. And uh, um, since uh, 1997, statistics have began to work on this uh, field to use um, the as real data, clinical data to do some parameter estimation, something like this. The first step, they use the base to do parameter estimation. And then, um, three years ago, uh, our group began to uh, use the OD model to uh, dynamic networks. So today, I want to show some research work in this field. Yeah. So this is a big uh, picture. Yeah. Um, this is the outline. First, I want to introduce some background. Uh, what's the OD model and uh, what's the gene regulatory label work uh, and uh, the little reach. Then I want to introduce uh, our model and our selection method. 
for the theoretical results and the spiritual studies, I want to include them because the time limit. Then in the first section, I want to show the application to dynamic gene breakthrough network. Then uh, in the second section, I want to uh, do some summary and uh, show some future research plan. Finally, I want to introduce some thoughts and experience of my last uh, several years. Yeah. So this is a joint work with Dr. Tao, Dr. Hua, and Dr. Hu Ling. Yeah. As we know, the gene vector network is very popular. Yeah. Uh, in particular, in the last uh, several years. And, uh, of course, it is a very complicated process. Yeah. And uh, we want to know the interaction between different genes and uh, their products. To know which gene is related to other gene, what's the relationship between different genes, then we want to build a whole graph. So it's a label work. Yeah. And uh, um, based on the label work, we need time plus data. So, for the time plus data, it means we have to observe the subject for many times, not only once or twice. Yeah, so at least we need 10, 20, or 30. Yeah, so this is the is a time plus data. Or in, in other field, maybe you can call it a time series. Yeah, so it is a different name, but something are the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for each gene, we have a time plus gene expression data. And of course, it is very changeable for higher dimension level work. Because for um, animal like a mice or human studies, the number of total genes is very high. It's about 30 to 40,000. But the observations, the sample size is small. It's about 10 to 30. So it is a large P, small n problem. So P is the number of the genes, n is the sample size. So it's very difficult. And uh, in the literature, <coughs> there are a lot of uh, methods in this field. Like uh, we can use uh, information theory models. It is a lot of statistical model, so I don't want to introduce this model. And uh, um, a lot of research by micro research use the Boolean networks. It includes two states, on or of. So only two states. So it is a discrete model, not a continual model. And uh, in this, we also use the base network. For base, its uh, computation cost is very high. It is very difficult to apply it to higher dimension data analysis. Yeah. And uh, it requires pair. So we don't have the base network in our work. Of course, there are other many other methods like uh, latent variable models and uh, other regression models and uh, state space models in our work. We use differential equation models. If you want to use such model, you have to assume you are interested in the change rate of the genes or others. You assume the change rate is related to itself and the other genes. So then you can use the differential equation, OD models, to fit the data. So the OD model is a continuous model. Yeah. First, uh, then I want to uh, introduce a real example to motivate uh, our research. In 2004, Ranga uh, they published a paper in a uh, biological journal. Uh, they use a linear state space model to fit a uh, gene data, is the TCR activation data. So you can see here the model, the XT plus one is the state, right? 
is a discrete state at time t plus one. Then the red set x t is the state at time t. A is the coefficient or parameter. Y t is the observation. Because in practice, in biological practice, we cannot observe the state directly. We can only observe with the noise. So we get the yt, not the xt. So yt is a, a noise, vt is a noise. Of course, for the, this is a state equation, wt is another noise, it's like a normal value. Yeah. And the b, c, d are coefficients, a, b, c, d. We want to estimate them by observations. So this is a state space model. Then they do uh, two experiments to get the response of human TCLS by two treatments. In the first experiment, they examine 88 genes, you can see here, use the microarray technique, yeah, across 10 time points. It's from the initial <coughs> time points zero to 72 hours. So it's three days, 10 time points. And each gene was replicated 34 times. So this is a Langdutta data set, right? Then in the second experiment, they use the same way, but they edit the genes, yeah, and uh, replicate 10 times. Then they moved the poor results. Finally, they get uh, 58 genes. So in their paper, they just discussed 58 genes and uh, show some results about the late work of <coughs> A, B, C, D, yeah, like this. So then, this is a state space model, so it is a discrete type, but a continuous. We want to get a continuous network, so we want to improve by OD models. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just uh, do <coughs> parameter estimation, right? To one gene by one gene. So our work, our statistical methods can do variable selection and uh, parameter estimation at the same time. So this is a big difference. Now I want to introduce the general OD model, like this form, you can see here. The left side is the first derivative, xt, it can be one dimension or multiple dimension. So the first derivative, t, is a time. The change rate of xt is related to itself xt and the other vectors, right? So f is the function. f can be linear, nonlinear, parametric, or non-parametric. Yeah. Theta is the parameter. We want to estimate it. Yeah, it can be multiple dimension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And theta uh, can be constant or time vary coefficients. So here, the dimension of xt, p, in our real example, it is the dimension of genes, the number of genes. And the sample size, you can see here, n, I will introduce later. Mm -hmm. And for OD model, we need the initial condition. So x0 and t0. Then, under some conditions, the solution exists and uh, be unique. So, so this is a state equation. Then this is a observed equation. Because in practice, we can only observe xt with noise. So epsilon is noise. It can be normal random effect. Yeah. So at each ti time points, 
we observe the K genes. So the motivation is a YK here. Yeah. Then, first, uh, we want to introduce some parametric estimation methods for OD models. There are many methods. The oldest and the most popular one is the long linear square methods. It was proposed in the 70s by mathematics. And then a lot of biological research used this method. But uh, until our work in 2010, nobody discussed its theoretical results. So in, in our work in 2010, yeah, in under of statistics, we resolve this problem, and then we extend it to discrete uh, observations in 2014. So this method is the oldest and the po uh, most popular. Um, its its uh, estimation occurrence is the highest, but the computational cost is very high because if you were to compare that to the simulation or real data analysis. For each step, you need to reserve the ODE equation, right? So then it runs slowly. Yeah. Then, so it can only be used for parameter estimation, cannot be applied to variable selection. So then we want to transfer to another fast method, two stages motion estimated method. This is a fast method. It was proposed in 82 by Graha, uh, his uh, computer science research. Then uh, in 2008, our group and other French groups we established its theoretical result. And then uh, myself and uh, Professor Huli and uh, Professor Kuma we extend propose another new method to yeah it is uh, to do some change for this method yeah and then of course Ramsey and others propose other many other methods like the base method yeah we don't interest here so yeah this I have already introduced so then I want to show some details about this method this part method you can see here we have P genes. So then we have P O D model, right? For each equation, we have two steps. For each, for the first stage, we don't consider the O D model. We just use the observation, right? For each uh, uh, set variable or genes X K, we have the uh, Observations y k right? Then we use the observation to estimate the curve x k and its derivative. We don't in this step we don't need to consider the structure. We just do long parametric smoothing. Yeah. From the observations, then in the second step, we plug the observations of the derivative and the state variable to the OD model, right? The orange model is here, is the left side, the orange derivative, and the right side is the structure, right? Then it equals, right? Then we use the large square here. We plug the estimation of the derivative here, and then the orange estimation here. Then we want to estimate the parameter theta k in k equation. Here you can see the equation is here for high dimension data analysis, like for gene data, we assume each genes its coefficients are different. Now by this method we can estimate the coefficients y equation by one equation. But if you want to reserve the low dimension, just a parameter in estimation, then each equation 
they are prefaced, maybe are the same as the another equation. So for two equations can share the same prefaces in low dimension. But in high dimension, we just assume each equation has a different coefficients. Yeah. So this is the difference. So this is the method and uh, this is the history. Yeah. In 2011, our group, uh, PhD student and Lu and uh, Professor Hu Lin, they proposed a linear ODE models to fit the gene repair labels by such, you can see here, is a linear ODE models, right? Left side is the same, the right side is linear, one by one. So it is a linear attitude ODE model. Then they use the, the value selection scan method to do value selection and the parameter is matching together. But in practice, we look the relationship between different genes may be long linear, right? They may be long linear. But for the long linear, we don't know the exact function or the forms, right? So then we want to use a general long parametric model to fit it. So then we propose a such model. You can see here, this is a constant intercept. Then here, P dimensions. Then we have P long parametric functions, F. So each gene, the K gene, its change rate is related to itself and the other genes. Of course, most of relationship here F are zero. Just left few genes, they are related, right? Like a two, two, four, five, like this number. So they are sparse. So then we want to select the functions F and to do estimation together. Then we want to borrow the value selection ideas from regression models. Then exist the many value selection methods for high dimension data, like uh, bridge estimation, lasso, scan, and uh, sure event screen. In our project, we want to use a uh, adaptive group lasso. So this method extends the orange lasso to adaptive and group case. So this is our work. Yeah, we want we propose a new model and develop a uh, novel five-step variable selection methods, and then we establish a serial chart and uh, do some simulation studies and uh, real data analysis. So this is the first uh, section, instruct the background uh, and the uh, literature, yeah, and uh, give some ideas about our result. Then I want to introduce the details for our method. The first step, long parameter smoothing. For each equation, we just use the observations to estimate the curve. So it's a function, x, k, t, and it's a derivative. Yeah, we use the um, penalized spline. So this is the mathematical details that I want to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Then it's a uh, square to estimate the, the coefficients delta k. Then after we get the estimation of delta k, we plug it into the splines, right? No, then we get the estimation of the x k and uh, its derivative. So it's a spline work. And uh, for our real data, it is a long true data, replicate data. So then we can use a long parametric mixture effect model to fit the curve. In the second step, after we get the estimation of the orange curve and its derivative, then we plug them into the ODE model. Then we construct a search 
models. So on the left side, you can see here, H, H is this one. The estimation of the derivative. In the right side, you can see here, is the derivative, the estimation of the orange code, right? So for the orange additive model, here should be what? The observations, right? And here should be the vector. But our model here is not the observations, but it is the estimation of a curve. And here it is not a vector. It is also a estimation, an estimation of the curve. So they are different. And here is the error. For regression model, we often can say the error, the errors are ID. But in our model here, it is not ID. It is creative. So now our model and the orange regression model are different, much different. And our model is more complicated than the orange regression model. Then, because here there exists, yeah, the gradient, the long parametric part. So then we want to use a splice to approach it. Yeah. Then we show this model. Yeah. Here is spline quick basis and the orange basis function. Then we want to use the variable selection method to do estimation and selection. Here you can see here. The first, in first uh, we want to use the group class. So, yeah, this is some notations. Yeah. Then this is the equation to estimate the quick phase. Here you can see this is the penalty curve. If this is L2 normal, yeah, we shrink most of coefficients to zero. Just a careful fill of the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then after we get the estimation of beta, then we plug it into the surprise, get the estimation of the curve F. Yeah. This is the first the first uh, variable second step, and then we use the adaptive group class so, to do variable selection. Okay, you can see here, in, the, in this step, we use the uh, weighted, okay, the weighted lasso mm -hmm, to do the variable section, yeah. So this is the adaptive group lasso, yeah. Then we get the estimation of the curve F, then plug it into the state of value to get estimated, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the last step, we want to do lasso again, because in the first few steps, maybe we kept more spline basis, right? Most of them are not necessary, so then we do again to shrink many of them to zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the five steps. Then we get a lot of theoretical result, yeah, to show it can reserve the last p small n problem. And uh, from simulation, it works well. Yeah, and we compare it with the other uh, linear audio models. Yeah, it works great. Yeah. Then uh, I want to apply that to the orange real data example in the instructing section. For the real data, you can see we just use the non parametric additive audio model and uh, for such 58 genes and 10 time course observations. So the number of genes is 58, and the sample size is 10. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. 10 time points, of course, they are uh, replicated 34 times. But then we use the lamp parametric mixture effect model to estimate the orange curve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we draw the uh, photos. You can see here the dots. Is the real data. The observations, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is for four genes, the curve, yeah. Okay, the curve. Then this curve, the solid line is the estimation from step one by long parametric motion method. Then our method is this line. This one? Right? 
and the linear ODE models proposed by another uh, our PhD student who in their paper is this line, the dotted line there. Okay? You can see the two lines are different. They have some, yeah. And our curve is closer to the mean curve and the fit the data well. And uh, so this is the network for 58 genes. You can see for gene 1, gene 2, to gene 58. This this now is the which gene effect this gene. So if uh, we use the OD model, so this is the left side, this is the right side. And, uh, this now is a, this, this gene effect which genes. You can see whole picture. Most of them are just two or three genes, right? And uh, most of the others are zeros. Mm -hmm. And of, uh, of course, here the, the most one is, uh, is one line genes. From this picture, uh, we look for the literature and found uh, some results are proved by literature. So other research, they got the same results for the relationship between different uh, genes. But some results are not found in the region. So they we need to wait for times. Yeah. Maybe they are true, maybe they are not true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we draw line curves, yeah, for the F uh, function, you can see here the gene 45 effect uh, gene 2, like the curve is like this. So it is a continuous curve, right? Continuous? And we can know the trend from the start point to the end time points. And we know the cut of time points. We know which one is positive, which one is negative, and where is the cut off. Right? So, this is the, so this is the advantage of a continuous mode. Mm -hmm. And this is the big photo. You can see we draw 58 genes. The relationship is here, like this one. We draw a line to collect two genes <laughs> together. And the blue ones are big genes. Big genes means they collect more other genes. Mm -hmm. So for a small gene, they just take the one or two, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Then I want to do some summary. Uh, in this project, uh, we propose a sparse additive OD model to fit uh, gene rectory networks by dynamic review. And it's the first time to develop a complicated variable stack method for searching high dimension long parametric OD model. Because before our work, there are just uh, exist uh, linear OD models. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the uh, first time to establish the theoretical result uh, last, and the last piece moment and the simulation and the real data analysis shows our measure. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. uh, for the for the methodology and application uh, research plan, I want to develop uh, the variable selection method from vector selection to matrix selection. Because our ODE models, it is a system. It is a matrix, right? P times P. But uh, in our method, we just decouple it to one equation by one equation, right? So then we use the 
vector variable stacking method from search strings. But now I want to use the matrix stacking method to combine them together. Yeah, because the vector stacking, you didn't consider the structure of the matrix. So we ignore the many informations. Yeah, so then we want to extend it to matrix stacking. Yeah, and uh, of course, for matrix stacking, we can also apply it to multivariate regression models. And uh, I want to consider the variable stacking for high dimension semi parametric models with sensor data and uh, missing data for left sensor, right sensor, or input sensor, or and missing data because they are very popular in survival analysis. Yeah. And uh, we want to extend our ODE model to PDE model and uh, spatial temporal process models. So it is a status based model or SD model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then for application, I want to uh, apply such methods, variable stacking methods, to identify genes from glioma, brain and other cancer studies. Yeah. I have done some research uh, on glioma cancer studies to select the uh, segmented genes. Yeah. And uh, I want to apply the method to parameter data with the interaction across to atmosphere and lakes and the river yeah, and such complicated ecosystems. Yeah. Of course, I want to consider some dynamic networks in agriculture, fishery, and uh, other Later, size because you debate is uh, later agricultural feature and something, yeah, to combine them together. So, if we have time course data, then we can build a dynamic network, yeah, to, to know the relationship or the whole networks, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, this is the summary. Now, I want to introduce some experience and uh, thoughts yeah, about myself. Uh, I have many uh, applied uh, statistical experience in uh, this field. Like, uh, most of the uh, um, times I work on biomedical sites, like uh, ASE, brain drug, the low market studies, and others. And uh, I also uh, worked on some public health studies by Classical models and others. And uh, of course, I have done some repeated mutation work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, at the University of Rochester, I have involved uh, seven consulting projects with uh, biomedical researchers at our medical center. Yeah. Uh, I just list uh, five projects here to, like, uh, uh, to how to deal with missing data how to calculate some size to do long data analysis and uh, carbon coefficients and uh, to estimate uh, some spatial parameters and uh, to identify some vectors, predictors uh, in survival analysis. Yeah. Uh, I also have some experience to fit a large data set. A lot, yeah, like uh, uh, in the last uh, four years, yeah, uh, I identified a dynamic g ring network based on time course g data in this project. So, uh, of course, this is a public uh, data set. Mm -hmm. yes. So, it's 58 genes, of course, the ring twice 88, and then we use the 58 genes and the 10 time points. And uh, we will also uh, use a lot of RNA data set and uh, micro mouse data. And uh, for the um, Roma cancer study, this for this data, um, the number of genes is 30,000. But the sample size is only 30. So in then in the first step, we plan to use the statistical available time matrix to fit it in the first day, but then we failed. We found it worked worse. Then we use the the ad hoc method to cut off the 
number of Gs from 30,000 to 6,000 to reduce the dimension. Firstly, then we use a variable stacking method to fit the 6,000 Gs. Mm -hmm. to finally, we select the line Gs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also uh, use the network for stock market data. So the, then the number of the stocks is about uh, 1,500. And the observation is the sample size is big. It's about uh, 2,500. Because for 10, day, 10 years, then for every working day, yeah, about this. So then we get some result. Then now we are working on explaining our result. So this is the stock network. For teaching and uh, instructing experiments, uh, I uh, have uh, taught uh, small methods and the reading course at the University of Rochester. And uh, in China, I have taught uh, three courses, random mathematics, advanced mathematical physics, and uh, econometrics. So this one is for undergraduate students. And these two are for master students. And uh, these two are for <coughs> PhD students. So these two are taught by English, and these three are in Chinese. So this is my research interest, uh, like big data analysis, web stacking, semi-parameter and non-parameter studies, survival analysis, and uh, OD models, and uh, uh, disease and modeling, and the network and public health studies. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to use my thoughts on this presentation. Yeah. Um, I think for the first three points are listed in uh, uh, yeah. First, uh, for this presentation, uh, I should uh, collaborate and uh, do consulting projects with uh, uh, all researchers or professors in this dimension, right? So this is the way low. And then uh, I can do some teaching or instructing for this uh, dimension and the uh, or the knowledge department, like uh, mathematics and the statistics. So for this division, I can teach some basic statistics course to all majors, black statistics, right? To introduce the basic concepts, the basic regression model, generalized linear regression model, how to do data analysis, how to use SAS, such as basic course for the division. And for the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, I can teach you uh, and greater and uh, greater course, yeah. And the other service, I can provide some, I can take a uh, graduate community, yeah, something like this, yeah. Uh, then I want to do more work, like uh, uh, based on the capital and the consulting projects, uh, we have a lot of real data, right? Then in the first table, we reserve it uh, we will solve the problem, the real problem, by existing the physical methods, like using the linear gradient or something like this, uh, this model, the existing models and methods. Then I want to do advanced or more complete work to propose a new model, a, a, a new methods to combine them together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can help uh, the professors uh, uh, at the division. Um, some little grand application, of course, I can sub, I can prepare, uh, propose by myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is a grand application. So let's go. Thank you. We have a uh, maybe a minute or two for questions. If anybody has any questions that they'd like to to pose, Dr. Mims. When we talk, we talk about agriculture, you look at very dynamic models. You mm -hmm. have chemical, physical and biological properties that are going to dictate outcomes of, of data. Mm -hmm. How do you see all the models fitting into those type of systems? To the 
How will you see those models predicting that type of interactions? Interacting. Uh, In general, in general, the interaction for different uh, genes or different uh, vectors. Mm. I think for late work, the relationship for sometimes uh, uh, you, you like in our work, we use the OD model, right? In other works, you can use the correlation, correlation, right? Which one, which gene or which vector is related, or they have a higher correlation with each other. But some, uh, but for higher dimension real data, I think uh, most of them are correct. If you do analysis, then you have then for such case you have to have some biological or some practice experience to choose or to make a decision whether your results are correct. So in my uh, experience, the this result is not uh, all correct. You have to some background experience to choose which one is correct, which one is ready for you. Interaction. And of course, for models, no one model is correct. <laughs> but most of them, or many of them, are useful. Yeah, this is my answer. I think. Yeah, hope to answer your question. Yeah, thanks. Actually, kind of similarly, when, when I dealt in the past with microarray data, but mm -hmm. also with agricultural and environmental mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. The, I mean, unlike biomedical research where we have more money, we can do higher replicates, we can ensure that we don't, we have minimized missing data. Mm -hmm. the environmental and agricultural mm -hmm. fields typically, mm -hmm. we don't have that luxury, or we frequently run mm -hmm. across missing data mm -hmm. uh, and low replicates. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering, as you advise the projects, do you have a hierarchy? I mean, ODE sits at a level where you can, it works well with a highly replicated deep data set. Mm -hmm. As you move down to less replicated data sets and data sets to become rougher because they're missing more data, mm -hmm. what sorts of models, is there a hierarchy that you, that you utilize, a framework that you would advise students or collaborators to employ as models to handle those dirtier data sets? Um, in our, uh, this is, uh, this project includes a public data set. So the researchers, they have ignored the missing <laughs> of the basics. And in our real data produced by our labels, we have gene data from mouse. So, there are uh, many missing data, like uh, about uh, 10 to 30 percent are missing. So in the first step, we want to do some data cleaning. Uh, of course, the simple way is to ignore the, the missing observations, right? Because we have so many genes, like 30 to 40 genes, then we ignore the all missing genes, missing observations, then maybe we keep the name about uh, 70 percent of the genes, yeah. Because our high dimension data analysis until now <coughs> cannot be applied to such missing data ways. So we have, we have to ignore the data. Of course, in the future, we can improve our method to include the missing observations. Now I have a follow-up question yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for missing data, one way to do it is remove it from yes. the data. Yeah. But for ODE, the continuous uh, mm -hmm. model, the advantage of that is it can account for irregular interval in the data. Mm -hmm. My question is for K, mm -hmm. uh, 1, 2, P, can you have different uh, 
observation time for each each k. So in that way, you don't need to throw up all the data, uh, the missing data. You know, uh, mm -hmm. because this is actually a question I wanted to ask you. Is can your ODE model mm -hmm. account for irregular interval data for each specific gene? For our case, for wildlife, for each population, mm -hmm. we may have some year we have missing data. Mm -hmm. But now, when you build your model for each population, for each case, mm -hmm. you have different. Uh, Observe the input. Uh, and the different the hand points. Yes. Can you, can 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 your model uh, account for that? I in, think so. Account? Yeah. I think so. Second, so. Is, for your data, is it all normal data? Normal uh, distribution. Normally distributed. Uh, you mean for the for why? Observation. Yeah. Why? Yeah. For your error um, is normal. Here, the Lewis emission K. You can assume. Uh, they are Roma or others because we use the least square. Not uh, likelihood. Yeah, so this square we don't need the distribution. But you can use likelihood that you should have shown the uh, no. For your gene network, it can be easily applied to social network uh, yeah. for animal studies. Yes. You can account for non normal data for interaction between individuals. I think so. Yeah, we I can see that. like one yeah. philosophical expression, yes. yours is philosophical expression. Mike, many of you, I know you're interested in how to model the stock market. So <laughs> I, would, I would suggest you come to one of the faculty sessions that we have, the itineraries that were sent out. There were sessions for each of the colleges and research units for CFR, FWRC, CALS, MAPIS, and CBM. So I refer you to those itineraries that we sent out through the division and through your colleges and hope you'll participate. And please encourage your graduate students to participate in the open forum with the graduate students. So let's thank uh, Dr. Shui one more time. I